Welcome to Anointing Hour. I'm Minister Nichelle Lewis of Christ Center del Pomona. Yes, Lord, let's have a word of prayer. Yes, Lord, we surrender all to your will and to your way, O oh God. God, we just exalt your holy name today, O oh God. You are worthy to be praised. Your word declares in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. And you said that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to your purpose and your will, God. So, God, I just exalt you today. God, we use the weapon of worship on today, O oh God. We worship you today, O oh God. You're worthy of all the glory glory. You're worthy of all the honor. We just thank you, God. We extol thee, God. If we had 10,000 tongues, God, we couldn't thank you nor praise you enough. You're worthy, oh God. You're worthy. You reign supreme over every situation and circumstance. You reign supreme over every individual's lives, oh God. And I know the God that answers by fire will answer your people speedily, oh God. I thank you, God, for the deliverance, God. I thank you for the healing, oh God. I thank you for the restoration, oh God. You are worthy worthy, oh God. You're worthy, God. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost. We worship you on today, and we give you thanks, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, without further ado, I would like to welcome Apostle Vincent Acosta. Praise the Lord, and God bless you, and thank you for tuning in to another moment of anointing. Humbly, I'm the servant of God. Apostle Vincent Acosta of Christ Eternal International Church. Like you always, we are one church in four places here in California. Please, let's look unto the Lord in prayer. Most holy and everlasting Father, thank you in Jesus' name for the platform offered. 
I come, mighty God, as your yielded echo chamber. Mighty God, I pray in Jesus' name that the Spirit of God will articulate the viewpoints, the ideas, the wisdom of God through me to bless your people who are tuning with all my myriad concerns and challenges and difficulties. I pray that your word will address. And Father God, in Jesus' name, my lady, I fear. I pray in the name of the Lord that none that has tuned in, mighty God, will go back the same. Let your word, the transformation of power and spirit in your word, be activated to reward their faithfulness and obedience and their loyalty to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you again. Please, if you have your Bible handy, let us go to Genesis chapter Genesis chapter 16. We'll read from verse 7 to 14. Let us hear the word of the living God. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shu. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from? And where are you going? She said, I'm fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. Angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are a child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. You shall be, he shall be a wild man. His son shall be against every man, and every man's son against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to, to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, I have also here seen him who sees me. Therefore the world was called Beel High Roy. Observe it, it is between Kadesh and Bered. God bless you. And since the year is still fresh upon us, and I believe God has so many words of inspiration and encouragement to advance to us, so that we don't let out down our faith and our hope that is firmly buttressed and expressed in Christ, our Lord. You see, a reference point in life's experiences and challenges uh, to these saints in the Bible, how they walk, how they depended on God, and how they strive through life and some of the difficulties and the challenges that comes our way. God, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, no temptation has befallen you except that that is common to man. But God is faithful and just that he will make a way for you to escape. So we see that all these people who believe God and walk with him in times past, the things that they went in and the situation that they fell in, God never abandoned them, which means that, that the God that you and I believe in, the Bible tells us in Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8, the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever is never going to abandon you to whatever challenge and trial that you, you are going through. He is God who will invariably bring you out. We have to know that with God, there are no shortcuts he could have learned. We see the example of the Exodus generation. The Bible says that the journey in the Exodus could have taken 11 days, but God permitted them to walk through the wilderness and to cross the Red Sea and the, and the Jordan and to go through battles and hunger and all those things he permitted. Because later on he articulated his reasons in Deuteronomy chapter 8, the reason why he permitted that so that you will be able to know in their hearts whether they will serve him and love him and also as, you know, celebrate him as their God. So God permits certain things to come, but it is not more of a punitive way situation, but it is more because we know that the Bible says expressly that he chastens those that he loves, as a father does. So he permits certain things to come our way. A classical example right now for our study and inspiration is Hagar. Now mind you, Hagar came to the house of Abraham as a slave, but she was still part and parcel of that house. 
It doesn't matter who, however you came into this house of faith, you belong, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, you belong to the household of God as far as you are a member of the house, the blessings of the house, there is a portion of the blessings that is for you. So she came to this house, and I'm not going to what goes so much as to the, all these things that happened, but let us see here. At this point, Hagar was running away from Sarai because she became pregnant. And then there was these situations where her own, you know, pride and, you know, certain things occasioned some kind of challenge between her and Sarai. And Sarai became very much upset about the whole thing, so she has to run away. And in her course of what, running away, not following the proper protocol, the Lord what? Causes his angel to meet her in the wilderness. And in many cases, that is how it is. Because we know that the Bible did articulate, yes, there were disciplinary measures that were what, instituted, that Sarah, you know, instituted to make sure that this her slave conformed to certain things. And then, say, as a result of that, ran away. And in many cases, some of us, yes, we don't want to what? Submit to what? Effective, proper, corrective discipline. And it happens everywhere, especially it is more pronounced in the church, where some people know that they are, they are obviously in the wrong, but still want to what? Have your, their way and things like that. It does not augur well, especially people in leadership who don't want to submit to effective and proper authority and to respect the, um, the existing authority that God has put in place. It was, Sir, it was Hagar who, because she's been blessed ahead of Sarah, started what? This whole thing has caused this trouble. And then, you know, Sarah wanted to, her to know that, yes, I'm the authority here. So if you want to do anything at all, it has to be my way. And as a result of that, she decided to run away. But the point is this, she didn't know where she was going. And there are many people who have rebelled like that against what? Right, you know, rightly instituted authority. If Sarai has been a very bad person, I don't think God would have sent the angel to go and tell Hagar, go back and submit. There are so many of us who hate authority, don't respect authority, don't want to what? Submit to the authority that God has placed over us. So as a result of that, we struggle and challenge. We have to understand the Bible says all authority source comes from God. Bible talks to us that we should submit to all authority. Even, you know, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, it says, pray for all those in authority. You don't criticize, you don't judge, and there are so many people, whether, you know, better governmental authority, whether spiritual authority, we attack, we undermine, we do all sorts of things. Sometimes there are people who simply what, get so discouraged and frustrated because they are not getting the cooperation of the people who are supposed to what, to be undergirding them, the same people who are supposed to be undergirding them, undermining them. In Exodus chapter 17, 11 to, to 13, the Bible says, when Israel was at war with the Amalekites, Joshua was busy leading the battle down. The only way Israel was guaranteed what victory was that Moses' hand should be up. At that age, it wasn't what possible that he can keep his hand up, way up, you know, while the, the battle was going on. So, Aaron and Aaron devised a means. We need this man to win the battle. We need his hand to be lifted. Aaron was an authority, but he realized that it wasn't his place. He was even by age older than Moses. But the anointing and the calling was on Moses. Moses was the one God called and spoke mouth to mouth. Later in Exodus chapter 3 and Numbers chapter 12, verse um, Two to eight, God says, is there anyone that I speak mouth to mouth to? All the prophets, I speak to them in visions and in prophets, but not my servant Moses. I speak to him mouth to mouth, like a man to man, dialogue. They needed him. Do not ever think that the man of God, that the person of God, a spiritual authority God has placed over you, 
You may be smarter than the person. You may be cuter than the person. You may have money more than the person. But the point is that the anointing is never bought. It is caught. God is the one who called that individual and placed the person under you. Submit. The angel said, and this is why, because the point is though, that authority came from God. All authority comes from God. Because if you know, even in governmental structure, there is what? Delegated power and delegated authority. You can never function unless the authority to function has been delegated to you. And in this context, the authority was delegated because God called them from all of Chaldees into that land. Hagar wasn't there when God called him. Hagar wasn't there when God in Genesis chapter 12, 2 and 3, proclaimed seven major blessings upon Abraham and Sarah. She just came to find the blessings there and started partaking of it. And now suddenly she has to rebel because, hey, I'm the one who is pregnant. My mistress is not pregnant and started being rude. Be very careful. Life is not a race. And sometimes uh, it can get into our head that sometimes we think we have arrived because maybe I've got a breakthrough. No. That is not all that. Because you don't know what is coming. There are so many lessons to be learned here. The angel said, go back. You are lost. You don't know where you are going. And you are pregnant. You are trapped in the wilderness. Go back and submit. Powerful way. And I believe God is speaking to some of you out there. Maybe it's your challenge. You hate authority. You hate to submit. You have a problem with everybody. Sometimes some of you, parental discipline, you hate it. You resent it. You don't get along with your parents. They have your best interests at heart, but you don't want to listen to them. You don't want to listen to authority figures who want to correct you and maybe, you know, you know, discipline you in a loving way to restore you, you don't want to, you know, go along. And as a result of that, you allow that kind of what? Rebellious, mutinous behavior to carry you to places you are not supposed to go. This woman was lost, trapped in the wilderness. As some of you, you are trapped in a place in a no man's land. You have nowhere, you don't even have a clue where you are going. You are lost. But God will see the element of grace. Abraham and Sarah didn't know where she was. But God knew. This is grace. God reached out graciously, encountered her, saw her problem, and knowing that you know, she was in the wrong, and told her, go back and submit. First import, first thing that we have to address. I've always said that when we are pointing a finger, look at how many fingers are pointing at you. Before you start pointing fingers, before you start what? You know, apportioning blame, throw the searchlight on yourself. What could I have done better? What should I have done? Maybe I could have done this this way. Maybe I could have approached it this way. Did I even pray to see God's face before I made that move? Did I allow the Holy Spirit to talk to me? Or maybe I took matters into my own hand and, and I acted arrogantly because I think I know it all. Or maybe I'm, I know better than that person. So now you have created a crisis in the place where there should have been what? An understanding and love. Now confusion. The intent of Sarah bringing this woman in was a very harmless one. To bring her so that they, she become part of the family. In fact, it was an honor for her to have because she wasn't the only woman in that household, who could have fulfilled that role? Now they are, there's confusion because of her own what? Attitude and her own choices. But the Lord is saying, go back and submit. You see, the Bible says a gentle answer stands away strife. That is what we should all strive to, to achieve with one another. But then the Lord spoke to her. In most cases, please let me tell you this. You can never bless yourself. So many times people are trying, well, maybe I'm going, moving from this place to get my, my blessing from here. Listen, that geography belongs to God. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, 
In his heart, a man plans his own way, but God determines his steps. You can have the most effective plans or whatever it is, but if God does not bless it, it can't work. Everybody has a plan. Everybody has an idea. I recall a long time ago when the boxer, Mike Tyson, said something very, that was very profoundly, you know, incredibly profound. He says, everybody who enter into the boxing ring has a plan. Until they get a punch in the gut, then that plan di disappears. Everybody has a plan. 2017, everybody has a plan. Oh, I have a plan. This is my plan. This is my this. Until they take a, a, a hit in the gut, and then the plan disappears. The plans of God for you will never disappear. Because that plan... It's not you who has it, it's the plan that has you. By hook or crook, it will come to pass. So now God decided, after talking to her about submission and obedience, because the Bible says when you are willing and obedient, Isaiah 119, you enjoy the best of the land. God commands us unto obedience because he said the sin of disobedience, First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, is like the sin of witchcraft. First Samuel 15, 23, it's like witchcraft. God is calling us to obedience. So the Lord talked to her about what? Conformity to the norms and rules of authority. God submit. And then spoke to her about the future. Only God knows the future. Nobody, you cannot run. She was running to maybe to go and seek for a better future. No. You cannot raise a hand of God. You cannot raise a hand you know, of the steps that God wants you to take. Nobody can outrace to get into the heart, the promises. Only God can lead you and guide you there. God spoke to her about the great future that this woman has. Because of that reason, go. And when she was what? Compliant. Having seen the glory of God. This is what she said. I have now seen the one who sees me. I'm here to tell you. Maybe you are in a situation like that, a predicament like that. Maybe you have been caught in some web of, of confusion and you don't know what to do. You are going through, you are at your waist end, you are going through a situation, a challenge, you are battling with this, you don't know what to do. God wants me to tell you, he is the God who sees you. After all, how can you escape his notice? He is the omniscient, the all-knowing God. The omnipresent one. Only God is in that situation. Nobody has those attributes. But your Lord and God and creator and your savior. He sees you where you are. And he does not just see to preside over your demise, over your destruction. No. He sees enough to care enough to deliver you. Because God saw enough to assign this angel to go to deliver. But the point is this. Are you willing to, to receive? Are you going to be receptive to the directives of God? To the divine prescription, the divine antidote that is given to you? Go back and submit. When we make things easier like that, when we walk in compliance to his will, God is ready at every given time and situation to intervene and to bring you what? The needed deliverance. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, whatever the situation is, I'm standing on this prophetic declaration. I now see the one who sees me. El Roy. He sees you. He knows what you are going through. This 2017 is a guaranteed year of major breakthroughs for you because he's seen enough of your pain and challenges and trials and tribulation and he's going to reach out to you. Just close your eyes and lift up your right hand and say after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of any rebellious ways in any way that I've acted against rightly constituted and established authority. I've asked to be forgiven. And I pray that, Father God, you will touch me and show me the way back to my promises, back to my, to my purpose in life. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank God for your life and I pray that the hand of God will be upon you. The Lord will bless and reward your faithfulness and obedience. Until next week, I'm Apostle Vincent Akosa of Christ Eternal International Church. And if this, if this ministry is being a blessing to you, call the number on the screen. 
And if you are in the LA area and you don't have a, a church home, please call the number and come and worship with us. God bless you until next week. It's anointed.